Welcome back, Ghost Hunters. Today, I'm going to go through all the details you need to know about one of the bigger maps, the high school, and why you don't need to be afraid and why it's actually a much more simple layout than you might anticipate. But first, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you find my Phasmophobia tips useful or you find my other content mildly funny, make sure you subscribe. Smash the like button in this video and also go over to my Twitch. It's Bushwhack18. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. That's where we make this content. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions about Phasmophobia or anything, put them in my comments. I will get to it. Love you guys. Let's get it started. All right. So if you're a new Phasmophobia player and you are intimidated by the idea of going to high school, which is a much bigger map, don't be. And here's why. It's a lot more simple than it seems. I'm going to break it down in today's video. Don't you worry. First thing you got to know about high school, it's just a big square. So this is a view of the lower floor. And literally, you go in that middle door there, right above where it says Brownstone High School. That's the lobby. In the lobby of the high school, it's going to be 100% of the time where your cursed object is. It's always in the lobby, so you don't got to search for it. But once you go through that lobby, you can either go left, you can go right, or you can go straight through the gymnasium, which takes you to the back of the square. So you go left, you're going to walk down a hallway, there's going to be stairs. You go right, you walk down a hallway, there's going to be stairs. All right, you can either take the stairs, there's only two stairwells in the building, or you can just keep going around the square. On the bottom level, it's a little bit different from the top level because you can actually make a full lap. On the top level, I believe you have to, um, there's like a divider in the middle. So, now, with Breaker, the Breaker's going to be in one of four locations. That's the little green thing you see on the map up there. It's going to be underneath one of the two stairwells, okay? Or it's going to be upstairs in one of the two storage rooms next to the bathrooms, which is left side hallway, right side hallway. Breaker's always going to be in one of those four spots. So let's take a look at the upstairs. That um, black square in the middle there is the divide I was telling you about and the reason you can't go a full lap on the upstairs. But the upstairs, aside from that, is quite similar to the downstairs. So when you hit the stairs, you just go in a big square and search the rooms. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the key because we don't like to forget that in YouTube videos. It's embarrassing. We're going to take an EMF, a photo camera, and a flashlight. That's what I like to start with. Uh, Patricia Martin. We're not going to worry about that too much. The high school actually has three front entrances, one in the middle, and then one on each uh, far side on the edges of the courtyard, and it's got two back exits. However, you cannot exit out the back and come around the outside of the school. You, if you uh, go out that back door just to stay safe for a little bit or to, you know, come up with a plan or something, you still, to exit the actual high school, have to come back through all the way. So, and those uh, back doors are in the same hallway as the front doors that are off to the side. So here's the main entrance where the lobby is and our cursed object. And over here you can see the stairs in the distance. That's the right far entrance and there's one of those on the left side over there too. And like I said, you go in those side entrances, you can go straight down the end hallways and in the back there's also an exit. But just remember, it's a big square, okay? Big, big square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. Oftentimes in high school, uh, it's it's a, obviously a big map. You're gonna hear things before you see them. One of the trademarks of the high school is the phones ringing in one of the classrooms. So the ghost he likes to play with the phone a little bit, and that's always a dead giveaway of where it is. So we're looking for the cursed object to see if it's here. Ah, uh, here it is. We got a summoning circle right here. And to get that three star photo with the summoning circle, you gotta get right in there, right in there deep. So, since the breaker's on this side, like I said, you get to the end of the lobby here. There's the gymnasium in here. The also, there's back doors that go cut across the back part of the big square. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a right at the end of the lobby here and go towards that sterile I was telling you about where the breaker is under for today. While I'm doing this, we're going to listen. We're going to listen for the ghosty. Uh, if you didn't know, the reason that the breaker is important is because when you're in the light, you drain less sanity and the ghost will take longer to actually attack you. All right, so the breaker's on. That's how you turn a breaker on. Now, let me show you. This right here is the right side hallway. So we just came from over here, the lobby area. Now that far end front door I was telling you about is right here. So there's the trailer over there. There's the middle entrance. So this is the far right door. You can always come in and out of here. And there's an exit in the back, but just remember that doesn't actually go all the way around the outside of the school. So you can't actually leave the match from there. Now you can, uh, while you're listening, 
Um, you can really just search each room for the bone because that's a lot of money. That's kind of what I like to do. Uh, just spam the ghost name a little bit, or you know, just walk around, be uh, have your ears open, so to speak. And uh, if, if it starts taking a little bit too long, just always be aware of a hunt. Remember, there are some ghosts in this game that can hunt you right away. It's a very small chance, so actually, you should always, always be be ready for the hunt. Always think about those hiding locations and where you can go to stay safe. Great places to hide in high school are going to be the bathrooms, which are downstairs and upstairs on the sides here. So, bathroom stalls, very good. Just make sure your lights are off, your gear's off, you're not talking. So, just like downstairs, there's bathrooms on these side hallways. And we'll actually circle around and I'll show you where the breaker is upstairs as well. Give us a side. Ghosty. I want to try to get it to ring a phone so you guys can hear the phone ring. That'd be nice. Hear that? But this is the uh, front left side stair. Ooh, is he here? Did he turn this light on? Is he downstairs? Oh my god. So he is bottom left. We have identified him. That was kind of weird. Alright, so after that round trip there on solo, keep in mind, this is one of the reasons the solo is much easier than like a full squad. Your sanity decreases at a fourth of the rate it would with a with four people. So we're still at 62%. Alright, so we're gonna take in a spirit box, a book. And I'm going to take this thermometer just to make sure. Just to make sure the ghost is in that room. Now, as you can see, the thermometer here is hovering in the 40s outside. It's cold and rainy. When we get in there, if it goes down to the 30s, we know that that's probably where the ghost is. This is Fahrenheit, by the way. All you Celsius freaks, I don't know what to say. I got nothing for you. Why, oh, here, man, are you turn the light on again? Okay, so in here it's 15 degrees. It is freezing. We have freezing temperatures in here. Holy cow. Spirit box got to turn the light off for it to work. Where are you? How old are you? Give us a sign. Where's my camera? Darn it, I don't have a camera. Excuse me! Ghosty is trying to teach me math, okay? Ghosty is trying to teach me math right now. All right, more equipment. This is the thing about some of the bigger maps. You have to go back to that truck. It's a long journey to get that equipment. And while you're in the dark in the building, making those long journeys, your sanity is slowly, slowly eroding. Yes, yeah, so not only can you change from Fahrenheit to Celsius, it starts at Celsius uh, by default. We're gonna set up some dots. We're gonna set up a video camera in there. All right, and we're gonna check for uh, fingerprints. If I had had my um, photo camera there, I would've gotten a very easy ghost photo. It's always a good idea to drop your photo camera in the ghost room. I messed up there because I thought the ghost room was upstairs. So I made a dumb mistake. And uh, my, my photo camera's still up there. Rip. So far we have freezing as evidence. So let's mark that in our journal before we go in. It's never the best idea to mess around with a journal inside the building because bad things can happen. So right now we got either... Those are our options. It's already been narrowed down to these ghosts here. Uh, once we get some second evidence, our second piece of evidence will really be rolling and able to kind of have an idea of what we're dealing with. Let's see if we got orbs. The lights are, this ghost loves light on. I do know that. Freezing for days. Okay, I don't see any orbs. Let's set our camera here. I think we got a, uh, you want the camera facing the dots so that you can see dots a little bit easier. You can check them from the safety of the, of the truck. I heard a door. See if we got fingerprints. This door, maybe? No. I'm not sure which door that was. But when a ghost touches door, always check for fingies. Oh, is that this one again? I don't think we got. I think that was the actual ghost room door. I think that was this one for real. Okay. Back to the trailer. All right, we're gonna take our original. We're gonna take our flasher. Our a photo camera and what are we missing maybe a little i can use this opportunity to um show you guys how the salt works i'm gonna show you guys some ghosty footprints how about that so if you don't know how the salt works you put it on the ground you get three sprays of salt giggity <laughs> you get three uh you get three loads of salt <laughs> and then you gotta make sure you have a uv light or a glow stick so after it steps in the salt you'll see a footprint develop in the salt okay you're not gonna see the green footprints right when that happens. 
You gotta wait for the ghost to start walking after it stepped in the salt. You'll hear k -k 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 -k. And wherever you hear that noise, that's where you want to have the UV focus to get those green footprints and you can actually take pictures of them and make money off them. Or you can tell if it's a, if it's a wraith. If you get a ghost that does that, and there is no green footprint when it's stomping, you know you got a wraith on your hands. So let's check it out. Let's see if you can step in the salt. Step in the salt, big boy. Still got a freezing temps. Where are you? How old are you? Give us a sign. Where are you? Oh, there it is. There it is. Look. There's the footprint. We're gonna take our picture. So he stepped here and then he stomped over here. And then in the journal, that will look like. I'll show you from this side. A footstep. Congratulations. Oh my god. Oh! Oh! Oh, dear lord! That's why you don't ever go in the journal when you're in the freaking the, the place. Because the ghost is gonna take advantage and it's gonna Oh, it's a dot! You guys see the dots? We just got dots right there. Beautiful. So it's either a Yuri or an Oni. So we can rule out it's either EMF or orbs. Oh my god. That is a loud telephone. That should be an interaction photo. Yes it is. Oh my god. So it's either EMF or orbs. Um, I think it's probably EMF. What I need to do... Because I don't see any orbs in here. What I need to do is get an EMF and set up by that phone. Oh, is he stepping in salt again? More, more feet? Yeah, buddy. Alright. Alright, that was the scariest thing I ever saw in my life. Dear Lord. That ghosty was wild and... Also, big sure that if you have any questions, if you made it this far... A, you better be subscribed if you made it this far into the video. B, if you have any questions about Phasma in general, just leave them in the comments. I'll get to them. I'll get to them. So we do need a candle and a ghost photo. So we can take... Uh, we'll take the candle in. I'm not really going to worry about the ghost photo too much just because we're just... We're demonstrating here. In light rain, you can have the candle in the rain. In heavy rain, it'll blow out. But if you don't know how to light the candle, you have to have the lighter. You either have the lighter and light candle that's already sitting on the ground by pressing F. Hey, Toby. My cat's here. Or, you have the candle in your hand and you also have the lighter in an alternate slot and you just press F. So what do you, what you want to do to get that, that candle objective is we're going to go in the ghost room and just set the candle down like we would a dots projector or a book with F. So you'd see the little highlight here. I'm actually going to set it on the desk. That'd be cool. Dear Lord. Did it already blow it out? I wish I had my camera. I'm gonna get a camera right now. This has definitely gotta be an Oni. Right? Yeah, it's it's gonna be EMF, it's gonna be Oni. I'm gonna get a photo camera in my EMF. Cause this thing is active AF. Onis are the most active ghosts in the game right now when you're around them. So judging by the ghost events we've been having, this is definitely an Oni. But you always wanna confirm because Phasmo has a way of tricking you sometimes. It gets a little sneaky like that.